Hello, everybody from the Garrett Clune Initiative. Uh, this is James here. This is the first time we've done this. I know a lot of people were very curious and wanted to know uh, a little bit more about what we were talking to last night. So what I said we do, uh, along with Thelma, was to do um, a live version of this. So hopefully it'll work out and you'll get a little bit more from it. So I'm going to go through each of the slides and we'll have a little chat about, about them all. So it's about healthy living. We're going to do an overview and a re review. And just moving on from the next one, a little bit about myself. Um, I was originally a biochemist, a mad interest in, in health, and became a pharmacist. And over the years, I've done a lot of um, a lot of healthy things, like lots of running, Ironman, Marathon de Sable, and just really got an interest in how to live healthily longer. And that's difficult, even for myself. Um, purely, you know, I, I like to, to work a lot. I like to train a lot, I suppose, as well. But sometimes my diet isn't the best. And, and diet is, is really, really important, as we'll see as we, we go through this, you know. So if we're looking at modern living and what we see around us nowadays, we're looking at a lot of weight issues, blood pressure, cholesterol, arthritis, and obviously, menopause uh, in ladies is a, is, a, is a natural progression. But the one thing I'd say about menopause is in, in the Far East, symptoms are a lot less um, prominent than they are, are here in the West. Uh, you know, one of the things I mean in Asia rather than in the East, I mean, or in the West, as in what I'm talking about here is, is Western society. So menopause, obviously, the symptoms are a lot more prevalent. So from that pers perspective, we're going to have a little look through um, different aspects of this today. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to try and give you a few pointers that um, may help. And if anybody has any questions, then they can, um, they can always come back to me. Um, the healthcare revolution. Over the last 25 years, I've seen amazing changes in, um, say, for example, oncology, surgery, information and knowledge and how we can access it and, and medicines and all of these new medicines that are coming through that are highly specific um they're highly targeted towards particular um particular problems particular issues within the within the, a person's body so from that perspective we have come through um, a great learning um, and a great knowledge journey but in saying that, you know, as a pharmacist and working in pharmacies, you know, every day we're faced with with numbers of issues around, you know, what we had discussed previously, say, for example, weight, cholesterol, you know, is there things that we can do uh, to help us um, or help ourselves, you know, keep ourselves healthier longer? Um, the couple of things we talk about here around the whole area of food and nutrition, exercise is so important vitamins, supplements, and again, talking about how these can actually impact on, on memory, arthritis, sleep, cholesterol, um, menopause. The one thing I'd always suggest to people is the breakfast. It is so, so important to top up and get a great breakfast going in the morning. So many times I see people and they come in and they'll won't have breakfast or they'll have something like a high sugary breakfast, like say cornflakes or cocoa pops or one of those. And they're really packed with these fast release, releasing sugars. And they have a, a big impact because they release then a lot of insulin into the system. And insulin is very important at pulling sugars out of the system. And by doing that, therefore your energy levels don't really ever get to the, the where they should be in the morning. So really too much sugar in, in the system is bad. It's important, I feel, you know, we talk about vegetables and fruits a lot and really do we eat enough of them? You know, I don't think we do. And I think even from a starting point of making a considered approach of just saying, right, I'm going to get to see how many fruits, whether it's apples, pears, bananas, any of that into their system and into our system. How do we get that in? And some people will say, oh, James, there's loads of sugar in there. There are. But the great thing about fruit in its unadulterated form, not like fruit juice, is that there's fiber in that, and fiber has a great way of slowing down the absorption of sugar into the system. But we'll talk a little bit more about uh, fiber down the line. Really, really important. So your fruits are important. Your vegetables are important. 
water, what can I say? Hydration. Over the years, it's completely transformed in my people, in, the, in my opinion, about people that are actually drinking water and hydrating. But I do think that as we get older, we tend to drift away from that because we tend to go to the loo a little bit more um, because our bladders get a bit weaker. But you cannot, it's really important, especially for men and women, uh, to keep the pipes flowing. And that means, you know, getting your uh, correct amount of hydration into you every day. You know, 1% decrease in, in hydration in the body can lead to all sorts of issues. So from that perspective, um, it's very important to hydrate. You know, and that can be three or four pints of water every day. I see people that they don't drink any water, you know, and, you know, it, it does lead to issues because we're really a chemical system. And water, H2O, is very, very important. I just wrote a, a note down there, fries are not good. Overall, you get this thing, trans fats uh, around fries and, you know, chips and stuff like that. But every so often, the out fry is the worst. And again, I don't want to be straight-laced about this. We all love a fry, but it's in general, the 80-20 rule is really, really important. I can't stress enough the importance of exercise, you know, the, the value that it brings to the body and the mind is so important. We've seen that over the years, Operation Transformation. We've seen younger people and older people get more involved in exercise. And the amazing thing about it is it doesn't take that long. It's half an hour to an hour every day. And that can be a walk, a run, stretching, weights, swimming, anything. But just to get out there, you know, even a walk in the woods or whatever, it's really important. Like this morning, I, I went down to the Leap Woods. It was half six in the morning, I went for a light run, maybe 40 or 50 minutes. You know what? It just really sets up the day. So I just, you know, recommend that. Like a, the stretching is so important. There's some amazing people around the town that do a lot of um, calisthenics, yoga, all of these, so, so important. And the, I, I have mentioned here, prevents sores, prevents fractures. You know, in women, the more weight-bearing exercise you do, the stronger your bones become. And as men and women, as we get older, our bone structure tends to decrease. Women more significantly because we tend to lose, women tend to lose a lot of calcium out of the bone because of imbalances in, in, in hormones. So from that perspective, by strengthening the bone and using weight-bearing exercise, which don't put on weight, let's, let's be honest about that, but what they do do is, is strengthen up the bone. So that, that's important. Again, the release of good hormones into the body. So by exercising, that makes a massive difference to the to the system, and it really helps you that feel good moment, which is really important. The activation of the lymph system. Well, their lymph system is like the cleaning of the body, and it keeps everything um, activated and removes toxins from the system. So by keeping exercise, that gets the natural pumps going and keeps the lymph system very very active. Vitamins and supplement. I'd be a big proponent of it. I take a vitamin every day, a multivitamin. It increases the good in the body, you know, and even to take a, a multivitamin, say, three or four times a year, say, for example, the Salgar, male, female, multiple, uh, Quest, Active 55, even our own bit of its tonic, liquid tonic, two spoons a day is very, very safe and very, very effective, but it gives you a, a, a bit of a lift and it basically keeps your uh, minerals uh, increased, your supplements and your vitamins is um, at good levels. And if if it's actually a little bit over, the body is well capable of dealing with that. And we have this thing down at the very bottom here, MIND, mineral or medicine-induced nutrient deficiency. So sometimes if we're on a lot of medicines, the body is, is working overtime to uh, get rid of the toxins produced as a byproduct of medicine. And sometimes you can lose a lot of nutrients or you get nutrient deficiency out of that. So by taking a multivitamin, it's important. And that's where you should, you know, talk to your pharmacist, talk to your healthcare professional about going on one. But again, by actively taking one, it just shows that you're interested in, you know, looking after yourself uh, and keeping your keeping yourself um, healthy. I want to talk here a little bit about menopause. There's been a lot of talk in the news about it over the last uh, while. And I suppose I'll just give a little overview. There is lots of prescription, really good prescription only medicines there that really replace a lot of the hormones um, in the system. Um, what I would do is, these are a couple of recommendations from myself. Vitamin D, we've seen how important vitamin D is over the last uh, period of time, especially around um, uh, COVID. 
uh, taking calcium, your evening primrose, it really helps the skin. And, you know, sometimes you find with uh, uh, ladies who are going through it, you know, stress and fatigue, and there's no problem there in taking a big complex of rhodiola. Rhodi rhodiola, by its very nature, is a herb, but it's, it's what's called a positive adaptogen. And what I mean by that is it actually helps, uh, it just basically helps the system uh, just feel in a better place. Um, can these medications be taken with HRT? Absolutely, there is no problem at all. Um, we talk here about Marilyn Glanville. She is a very, very good range. Uh, she's very famous as a, as, a, as a women's promoter of nutrition. And her range is really, really good. Uh, the phytosoya capsules and gels, again, what this does is it mimics uh, the estrogens that, that ladies tend to lose as, as, as they go through menopause. And we talk a little bit about weight bearing exercise and again, the importance of that and, and strengthening up the bone. So from that perspective, again, you know, just think about it. I even pick a couple of these things just to go on the vitamin D. And what I talk about here is a little bit of consistency of use. So rather than saying, well, I've tried this for two weeks and it's not working, you need to give them time, you know, minimum three to four months. Cholesterol. A lot of talk about cholesterol. When I started out in pharmacy, there was a big push uh, for people to be on statins and get their cholesterol as low as possible. Like I remember times when people would be coming in with their total cholesterol down around 2.53. To be honest with you, in my opinion, is too low. And the recommendation now is around five because cholesterol by its very nature is really important in, as, a, as a precursor to the production of, of hormones. So from that perspective, cholesterol is important but it can be controlled and statins are by they're they're very good they're very safe and they will help but you know you need to think about your diet as well if we look here as well as the natural ones zero call very good at reducing down uh total cholesterol and reggie's rice um it has reversitrol in it which is important Diet can't stress it enough. There is predisposition in, in, in a small amount of people that would have genetically high cholesterol. But if you if you look at a statin or a natural one like Xerocol or Reggie's rice along with your diet, that will help. And some people, they often ask me, apple cider vinegar has been shown to help reduce cholesterol al along with lecithin granules put in your, in your porridge every morning. But if you get a cholesterol test done and it's a little bit high, you need to, if you're making changes, pop back to the doctor in three to six months time and see how it's going and, and just make sure that it's on, on the right trajectory. And I think that would be, that would be important. Um, memory. We've had a lot of uh, talk recently around Alzheimer's and dementia and the effects that it can have on the system. And really you know, as we get older, there is a, a, a predisposition for short-term, long-term memory to start getting affected. Uh, recently, there was a new study done with a product called Remind, which is um, omega-3, carotenoids, and vitamin E. And that has been shown to be highly effective in improving short-term memory in relation to um, memory loss. Now, there has to be, there's more work being done on that at the moment, but again, from from holistic point of view hydration vitamin b complex meditation again and the use of memory you know whether it's games say for example like chess or playing cards or whatever all of these have a positive impact on memory but just keep an eye out for the reminder there's a lot of good studies been done on that we did a little presentation a while back with a professor nolan from um, University in Watford, and he's the guy that has been very much behind this. And they have shown uh, using clinical studies that there there is a lot to be said about using these uh, particular type of nutrients in memory. Okay, arthritis, very very common, uh, both osteo and rheumatoid. We, we find a lot of it in. Um, I, I would say every third four prescription that we do is 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 something to do with arthritis. Again, I would say weight is it can be a critical factor, especially especially in osteoarthritis, where there's issues around around the bone or where there's inflammation, say for example, in the knees or the hips. So there is no reason why a person couldn't use glucosamine. Some people would often say who have diabetic can they use glucosamine? They can, but just keep an eye on it. Weight control, again, important. Light exercises. If you feel you can't walk or run, swimming is is absolutely fantastic. 
And sometimes in a localized area where you may have a localized soreness, you know, there's strong anti-inflammatory rubs out there now today, like say, for example, the Valterol or, or Diclac rub, you can buy it over the counter. And our own rub is actually quite effective as well. It's quite, it can be quite safe and it's you can use it locally in affected areas, say, for example, like your elbow or your knee and just massage it in. And you can use that along with an anti-inflammatory rub. The reason I say lots of broccoli, I uh, just threw that in there, believe it or not, broccoli is the most concentrated form of calcium, free calcium that you can take that the body actually loves. Okay. Sleep. Well, I think everybody in Ireland always thinks about their sleep. And I found that over the years, you know, there's a couple of really good things that you can do to help your sleep. And there was a fantastic book written. I know I mentioned it when I gave the talk, and I can't remember it exactly, but it will come back to me. But the I have a point there at the very top. Older one gets less sleep required. Well, I should probably say that the older we get, the less we sleep, maybe it would be a better way of saying that. But anyway, um, it's important. From the point of view, I'm going to give a couple of points here. Less caffeine. And what I mean by that, I'm having my cup of tea here at the moment. So what I try and keep, you know, I don't have any ca caffeine then say, after four o'clock because the half-life of caffeine is, is, I think it's about 12 hours. So any caffeine after 12 in the day, it's going to be in your system. And it does, it's a, it's a natural stim stimulant. And the same with uh, television, phones, computers in the bedroom. They naturally, the blue light naturally stimulates uh, leptin and ghrelin in the body, which are two, two hormones, which basically act to keep you away, awake. Um, there's a lot of work been done in the relation to valerian, chamomile, magnesium. All have been shown to promote a healthy drowsiness. You know, they promote a good sleep. And there's a particular medication is prescription only it's called circadian again that that um, allows when, when we're getting to the evening time our melatonin levels increases in the body and get this circadian rhythm and what melatonin does is basically mention it to the body look it's coming to nighttime i want to start um getting ready for sleep and you know some people find by taking extra melatonin that their, their sleep is, is, is a lot deeper you can get melatonin over the counter, I think, in the UK and uh, America. It's on prescription here. Um, but it's definitely something worth looking at. I, I, for me personally, I'd rather see a person on melatonin rather than a sleeping tablet. Although sleeping tablets, by their very nature, are very effective, but really short-term use only. Okay? So just think about that. The valerian, chamomile, team, magnesium. You can use them in combination, um, or you could use them... Uh, if you use that, say, for example, with less caffeine and no TV, I definitely think you, you, get, you get an improvement. And there's some tea bags as well that have a combination of the valerian and chamomile in it as well, which is very, very effective. Weight loss. Well, we all think about this every so often. I'm on my journey with it at, at the moment as well. And it is, it is really, really tough, you know. And you, it's all about calories in, calories out, you know. And there's a hundred different diets out there. There's loads of different foods, but sometimes you just have to say to yourself, right, I'm just going to be careful about what I eat. I find that eating late at night is not good. You tend to, to keep weight on. And if you control your, your calories in, you know, put in what I mean by calories out is, is doing a little bit of exercise and stuff over a consistent period of time. I find a lot of people that just go crazy at the beginning of the year for a month and then it just it peters away. Where if you say, for example, rather than eat loads of bars of chocolate, you transfer over to a protein bar. So don't get me wrong, some of the protein bars are 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 quite packed with sugar as well. But in saying that, if you're conscientious about it, it means that you're actually looking to move to a, you know, I suppose to a better place. What I do find what people I find is is going to the the weight loss programs, whether that's Weight Watchers or Slim Slim Ways or any of those, that they do actually um, they do actually help, and it just get, makes you accountable to yourself. So I'm on that bit of a journey at the moment, and it's um, I can I can honestly say it's the toughest thing I've ever done. And and the amazing thing about it is I never seen it coming on me. You know, you're just there, and then one day you wake up and you're saying, "Geez, I, I can't get into that." 
34 uh, inch waist trousers anymore. That's about 20 years ago. <laughs> That's just anyway. I'm working. I'm working on that, and I'm hoping to get back there and have a little bit of a target. So I've set for June. I'm going a bit doing a bit of a long swim, not that long, three kilometers, but um, I'm having a little target on that. But hopefully, uh, we'll see how that will go. All right. So my favorites or some of my favorites are green tea, a couple of cups of that every day, full of antioxidants, you know. Fennel tea, lovely for settling down the tummy, yeah. The omega oils, we don't get enough of them. We, our, our modern diets, processed foods that contain a huge amount of omega C, which is pro omega six, sorry, which is pro inflammatory. So you need to get that balanced out with omega-3. So you can get a balance of oils, omega-3, 6, and 9, or you can get the omega-3 on its own as well. One of the good ones, I have one here that I use. That's the omega-3 Zuki, that one there, which is actually really, really effective. And I find it very good because it's it's actually quite tasty. And it's in what's called a fat bilayer. What that means, it gives it absorbed very, very good uh, into the system. Um, Sorry about that, just bear with me a second. Yeah, there we go. So on the other one, and this is really important, 20 years ago, people did, you know, probiotics, what were they? They were found in health food stores. Now they're mainline because they've been shown how important they are in your gut. So concentrate or look and watch your microbiome. It's that area in the gut, how healthy it is, what's producing, absorption of nutrients and vit vitamins, promoting the, the production of serotonin. Really, really important. So going on a, on a probiotic after an antibiotic, I think is really important. Just do it as, as, part, as part of, if you have to get an antibiotic, use a probiotic. And there's no harm in using one every so often. And the other thing I'd like to talk about is a little bit about Multifiber Plus. Multifiber Plus um, is a product that we manufacture. It's packed two teaspoons, two tablespoons every day, brings enough soluble and insoluble fiber into your gut. And if you're taking enough soluble and insoluble fiber, it reduces down the incidence of constipation dramatically and it stabilizes the gut. So again, we would see a lot of issues around constipation. And with constipation, um, usually there's not enough hydration and there's not enough fiber. So from that perspective, if, if one of you guys is, is suffer from a bit of constipation or whatever, use the multifiber plus. It's very simple. It's very safe. Not for use in celiacs, by the way, because it's it's um, I've got gluten in it. But everybody else can use it. And for the celiac, they could use the benefits bowel support, which is very safe and very very effective. It's not as it's not as effective in constipation as the multifiber plus for a celiac. But what it does do is it keeps the bowel really really nice and healthy. Okay. So this is just a number of our. Um, products here the tonic you know for for during the year complete balance if you're coming out of a really big operation cold, long covid anything like that um our bowel support is very very popular for irritable bowel diverticulitis anything like that it can be used um crohn's uh so are feeling upset if you have an upset tummy um it can be quite effective and we've talked a little bit about the multifiber plus and our Energy Plus is a, is a, is a multivitamin that's, that's quite powerful. It's over 40 different um, products in it. So I'm just going to run through a couple of our bits and pieces here. But before I do, I notice that my power is running down. So I'm just going to run a plug in. I'll be back in one second. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Um, it's just the power was, was beginning to run down on me. But anyway, I'm just going to throw a couple of... Um, we do a baby cream. That's really good, uh, usually for babies and, and nappy rashes and things like that. But again, very, very good for, uh, say, for example, jock rash in men, slight irritations on the skin, anything like that. Extremely effective and very, very safe. On the right-hand side, the Vita Oil. We often find people coming in, say, with you know, where they've got a scar or anything like that, just use and say the white oil, a little bit of it, massage it into the affected area over a period of time. And again, just like brushing your teeth, you get up in the morning, you just massage that in. It's, a, it's very, very safe. There's no steroids in it. It's a combination of, of natural oils. Again, really, really good for your skin. So you can use that anytime 
that you feel, you know, even for, say for young lads, it might have irritation on the skin just after the shave or anything like that, just a little bit of that massage into it. Can it be used during pregnancy? Absolutely, there's no problem at all. Okay. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about this, about uh, the Nutrisci, the whey protein and the gainers. The whey protein, we would use a lot of that. Say, for example, during the day, and you're, you're say you're on a journey that you're trying to lose a few pounds, having a couple of scoops of this every day will increase the level of protein in your body. Now, some people find, oh my God, I'm taking protein, I'm going to put on weight. No, whey protein by its very nature will promote weight loss because it gives you a satiated feeling, you get huge amounts of amino acids into your body, and you get a couple of calories, but nothing like what if you were taking carbohydrates. So changing your your diet to a more protein-based diet really, really helps. So say, for example, after I do this, I'm going to go in and get a, a strawberry whey protein thing, shake it up in a, in a mixer, and it's really easy to take and very safe, you know, and there is no problem. And, you know, if you have an allergy towards uh, milk or anything, there's um, there's vegetable proteins as well, and they're really, really good, and, and they mix really well as well. On the other side, the Nutricide Gainer, and we found that usually we would use this for people, say, coming out after, after operations or feeling run down or whatever. And what this is, is really concentrate, concentrated calories. So people, say, who are struggling, say, on chemo or not being able to eat and they want something easy to take. Like, say, for example, this is the, the Nutricide Gainer, or the vanilla one. A couple of scoops of that, just mix it around. And it's, sometimes it's a lot easier to take because a lot of people, say, going through chemo or whatever, they really struggle with diet. And we have found that just by giving a couple of scoops of these or one scoop, maybe three times a day, it just keeps the calorie intake because you find that during, say, for example, chemotherapy or long illnesses, people just, they're just they're, their appetite goes. Okay. So that's just an overview, guys, of what we've done. I, I know I sent out a sheet with other bits and pieces, and I just, I suppose I got a call from so many people that I just really wanted everybody to. I suppose, understand where we're coming from. And if there's anything else that you'd like me to, to go through or understand, just let me know. Um, we've got Martina in Garden Street, Nolan Ashling in, and Maria in uh, Bunry. And we've got the one for Mary out in Carolina. So, and you've got myself as well. So if any want to come and ask any other questions or anything like that, just let me know. And thank you again for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. I hope you have a great day and stay healthy.